Scamtartica is a flat earth documentary made in response to the final experiment. It's from the Space Busters YouTube channel and over the past couple of months we've been debunking it piece by piece. Today is episode 10, we are over 1 hour and 40 minutes into it and there's only 3 episodes left. Roll the titles! and welcome along to another video with me, Simon Dan. Thanks very much for joining me. Right, on we go then with debunking the Flat Earth documentary Scamtarctica. So far we've had nothing but misunderstandings of the sun, sunsets, time zones and coordinates. Will they understand anything by the time this is over? Let's find out. Again, this is not to make any claim that this is what is actually going on. That might not be what's happening at all. It is only to show that we can observe this kind of phenomenon in various cymatic experiments and techniques using things like cymoscopes, where audible sound waves make visible light in water mediums via their vibrations, as do experiments like the famous star in the jar. So again, one cannot claim a 24-hour sun in one spot in Antarctica can only be explained by the globe model. Let's be crystal clear here. Somatics is nothing but sound vibrations making patterns in a medium. It has absolutely nothing to do with the path of the sun across the sky or Earth's axial tilt. And that star in a jar, that's solo luminescence. Light flashes caused by collapsing bubbles in a liquid. Again, nothing to do with the fact that you can literally film the sun circling above you for 24 hours in Antarctica. If you need cinematics or solo luminescence to explain why the sun doesn't set at the South Pole, you've already lost. The globe explains it perfectly with axial tilt. This is a very real and repeatable phenomenon that would have to be studied and debunked, just like the possibility this was faked with plasma technology before moving on to any such claim. Science doesn't work on debunk until proven false. It works on evidence in favour. You don't get to invent a plasma hologram the size of the sun and then sit back and say, well, it's your job to prove me wrong. No, it's your job to prove you right. Until then, it's just word salad. To fake the Antarctica midnight sun with plasma tech, you'd need a projector bigger than most countries, with 360 degree coverage, visible from multiple research bases and cruise ships, and it would need to sync perfectly with orbital mechanics, solar output, and every single telescope on Earth. Nonsense, I think. Which brings us back to these two bases, Rothera and San Martin, the only two bases allegedly on the Antarctic Peninsula claiming to have 24-hour sun periods. They are nearly on identical south latitude lines, Rothera allegedly on 67.33 degrees south and San Martin allegedly on 68.07 south. Again, the coordinates are wrong. And also, this is not nearly identical. It's over half a degree apart. That's over 35 miles. Just 47 miles east and west of each other, with only a 10.5 mile difference between their alleged latitude locations. No, it's not a 10.5 mile difference in latitude. You've orientated your map incorrectly for one. They're actually 38 miles apart exactly in latitude. Closer than you probably drive to work and back each day, and a jogger could casually run their measly latitude difference in an hour or less on foot. Casually run 10 miles in an hour? You clearly don't run. My PB for 10 miles is 1 hour 17 minutes, and I was not running casually. Again, as Jaren says, we cannot live on a globe if the identical latitudes don't have matching day lengths and same identical date periods of alleged 24-hour sun and non-24-hour sun. But they are not identical latitudes. Identical means identical, as in exactly the same, not off by half a degree. So timeanddate.com reports San Martin's alleged 24-hour sun starts November 27th, three full days earlier than it reports Rothera, just 10.5 miles north, impossible. 
and dateandtime.info says, no, 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 San Martin's alleged 24-hour sun starts November 25th, and Rothera's November 28th, another three days difference, and that is also two full days earlier than time and date's alleged start dates. So not only do they debunk themselves, they debunk each other. Except they don't because it's not 10 miles. And again, they're not the exact same latitude. Then timeanddate.com claims the alleged 24-hour sun period ends for San Martin as late as January 16th and Rothera's January 13th, meaning San Martin is having six more days of an alleged 24-hour sun than Rothera, despite being only 10 miles south? Get out of here. Amazing how confident he is, isn't it? Considering he fluffed his distance calculations. Date and time claims even a day longer for San Martin on the end, with the 24-hour sun ending January 17th, not 16th, and Rothera ending a day later on January 14th, not 13th. Two bases on nearly identical latitude, having 45 days of 24-hour sun? Or is it 48 days? Or is it 51 days? Or is it 54 days? That's a nine-day difference between the shortest 45 days and longest 54 days claim, 47 miles apart from each other and 10 miles north of each other. All of this was argued on a premise he got wrong, of course. Would he acknowledge this if we pointed it out to him? I don't know if he would. And Jaron cannot have his cake and eat it too, because if he claims this software is just not accurate, that debunks his claim that the GLOBE model is proven by its accurate software predictions. And again, when we go to the last day, they both at least agree there was no 24-hour sun, despite both sites agreeing on each base's solar noon times to the exact second and claiming to know their day lengths precisely to the exact second. We spoke about this before. Solar noon isn't something the base commander is eyeballing. It's calculated from longitude and Earth's rotation to the second. Rothera is off by 20 minutes and San Martin is off by 53 minutes. And they're off by that much from each other despite a 10 mile latitude difference. Again, their median latitude between their alleged 67.33 south and 68.07 south is 67.7 south latitude, putting the alleged earth rotation and sun speed at 394.7 miles per hour or 6.57 miles per second meaning the sun would travel that 10.5 miles latitude difference in just under two seconds, not 53 minutes. Oh, not this nonsense again. Converting a north-south distance into seconds of time with a ground speed for the sun is pure nonsense. It's meaningless and shows a massive lack of physics understanding. And yes, the same crap happens on the first day they at least agree the alleged 24-hour sun period ends in mid-January. Same solar noon times, but the day lengths are off by 24 minutes for Rothera, now 56 minutes for San Martin, and is long from each other. But it's not even just that. Because Rothera allegedly sits on the identical latitude ring with Mawson Base, and nearly the same ring as Modo Desnaya, Casey, and Mirny Base. And San Martin allegedly sits on an identical latitude ring with Davis Base, and nearly Leningradskaya, Druznaya, and Neumeyer too. So we can compare those as well. I can pretty much guarantee that none of these are on the exact same latitude. Obviously, sunrise and sunset times and solar noons wouldn't be the same on a spinning globe, but day lengths and dates of alleged 24-hour sun periods have to match, or we cannot be on a globe. And let me clarify, because astute minds and even Jaron will rightly say, well, why is it that these latitude day lengths are matching up elsewhere on the Earth but not Antarctica? Obviously, Jaron did not go physically double-check those day lengths with his own eyes and a clock 
to verify it's not just software filling in predictive latitude calculations via GPS coordinates. At high latitudes, the sun is skating along the horizon at shallow angles. That means local terrain, mountains, cliffs, refraction. They can all nudge observed sunrise or sunset times by tens of minutes. You can't demand exact second matches when one station has a clear sea horizon, for example, and the other has a mountain ridge to the west. This is something you have ignored through the entire documentary. But let's say they are correct. It's simple. Because once you understand the paths and changing altitudes of the luminaries going around the latitude circles between the tropics, the sun raising one degree per day up the Christmas tree vortex for six months from Capricorn to Cancer and lowering one degree per day on the way back out, and the moon doing 13.22 degrees up per day for 14 days a month and down for 14 days. It's true. No matter which ring the apparent sun's wave is traveling around between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn, anywhere else on any point around that same ring should experience the same. If the sun were circling latitude lines like a train on tracks, then every location on that circle would see the same sunrise, sunset and day length. But we don't, do we? That's why London and Calgary, for example, can have wildly different daylight hours in June versus December. The only model that explains that, a rotating tilted globe. This does not require or prove a globe. It happens the exact same on the flat earth map. And software can also be made using these same angular calculations on a flat earth map. We know which rings they are on based on which days because our entire Gregorian calendar is set up around the cardinal point solstices and equinoxes on the zodiac. And we celebrate holidays there to remind us they never change. That is not how models work though. You can plot the numbers on any shape you like. A circle, a square or even a napkin. But the moment you test that against real world distances and time zones and travel, your theory falls apart. You seem to think the burden is on us to disprove your theory in order for it not to be true. That is the completely wrong way round. And even on the flat earth system, this should be happening for these Antarctic bases allegedly on the same latitude lines as each other, yet they are not reporting the same. So the question is, is that because they are squeezing them onto a completely fictional round continent that doesn't exist in reality? No, and you still ignore the fact that the 24-hour sun itself is impossible on your map. For example, Rothera Base is on the exact same alleged 67.33 south latitude ring as Mawson Base, even though they are across the entire alleged continent. No, they are not. Rothera Base is 67.562 degrees south. Mawson Base is at 67.603 degrees south. Very close, but not exact. What happens in latitude stays in latitude and Rothera is just less than one degree latitude difference from Molodiznaya, Casey, and Myrny base, also way across the alleged continent. Remember, from other bases on that latitude, like Davis and Zongshan, with a 0.9 to one degree latitude difference, this is only 32 to 36 miles difference in latitude, not some huge distance. But we've already stated this before. At these high latitudes, small difference in latitude can make a big difference, certainly compared to the sun at lower latitudes. So the alleged 24-hour sun must start on the same day for Rothera and Mawson, not maybe November 28th, 29th, or 30th, a three-day difference. Interestingly, as I mentioned here, the individual sites match start days on each site depending on whose accurate globe software you ask. And we are to believe that the alleged 24-hour sun for three other bases on 32 to 36 miles latitude away don't start their 24-hour suns until December 7th, or is it 10th, or is it December 5th? These three are off by three days from each other for the exact same base, and the total area for that latitude is November 28th to December 10th, a 13 day discrepancy? Yes, across bases over one degree apart. Not uncommon at all. Molodezhnaya is on 66.39 south latitude, 
six miles latitude difference from Mirny, yet the Russians say Molodezhnaya starts November 29th, seven days earlier than Mirny? How does Molodezhnaya's 24-hour sun start before or on the same day as Rothera or Mawson if it is 32 miles farther north or away from the alleged South Pole in latitude than they are? It's the same with the alleged ending of the alleged 24-hour sun. So when is it, O oh, accurate globe model software oracle? January 12th, 13th, 14th, 11th, 3rd, 5th, 7th? That's a 12-day discrepancy, but at least one more day accurate than the 13 days going in. He just isn't getting it, is he? And honestly, I'm bored of the spreadsheet stuff. So let's finish up today's episode, shall we? That is 10 episodes down, two to go in this series. I bet you can't wait to wrap this one up, can you? Let me know in the comments what you thought of this particular episode, as I say, we're all done and dusted for another one. Thanks so much for watching today. As ever, it's appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the thumbs up button too. I've been Simon Dan, have yourselves a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow for five conspiracies that eat themselves alive. See you then.